Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about the regulation of blood pressure. So we will be basically discussing more about the short term regulation of BP. So this has been asked previously in many university questions like describe the baroreceptor mechanism of blood pressure regulation, the role of baroreceptors in blood pressure regulation and short term regulation of blood pressure. So we will be covering these topics in this video. So when such a question is asked you can always start with an introduction which should include the definition of blood pressure. So you know blood pressure is a lateral pressure exerted by a column of blood on the walls of the blood vessels while flowing through the vessels. So as the blood flows through the vessels it will exert a lateral pressure and that is called blood pressure. And it is maintained within a normal range by various regulatory mechanisms. So we know that the normal range is around 120 and 80 millimeters of mercury and it is maintained so by various regulatory mechanisms. So which are short term regulation, intermediate regulation and long term regulation. So there are three levels at which BP is regulated of which the first one is short term regulation. So now uh, we can write about short term regulation. So in short term regulation the most important feature is that there is a rapid control of arterial pressure. So it occurs within seconds to minutes. So it's a, it has a very rapid control over our blood pressure and it mainly occurs through reflex mechanisms. So what are the different reflex mechanisms in short term regulation? They are baroreceptor reflex, chemoreceptor reflex and ischemic response. So these are the three basic reflex mechanisms by which the BP is regulated in a short term or our BP is regulated rapidly. So we will see more about the first one now that is baroreceptor reflex. So what is this baroreceptor reflex? Baroreceptor reflex basically comes from baroreceptors and baroreceptors are spray type nerve endings and they are located in two parts. One is the wall of our internal carotid artery that is carotid sinus and the next is on the wall of the aortic arch. So suppose this is the heart. We have got the aortic arch here which contains the aortic baroreceptors. And we know there are many branches for the aorta of which one is a common carotid artery. And here in the carotid artery we have got the carotid sinus. Okay, So there are baroreceptors in two areas. One is the aorta as well as the carotids and they are basically spray type nerve endings. Okay? So now what happens? See whenever there is a change in BP it will be de detected by these baroreceptors. And the information from these baroreceptors will be conducted onto the brain via specific nerves. So from the carotid sinus the information reaches via the glossopharyngeal nerve whereas from the aortic uh, baroreceptors the information passes on via the vagus nerve. And thus they reach the nucleus of tractor solitaris which is present in the brain. Okay? So this is how the information from the baroreceptors reaches this medullary center. Okay? So uh, signals from carotid baroreceptors are there and signals from aortic baroreceptors are there. From the carotid via the glossopharyngeal it reaches the nucleus of tractor solitaris whereas from the aortic via the vagus nerve it reaches the nucleus of tractor solitaris. So this is the basic physiological anatomy. So now we will see about the reflex proper. So whenever there is an, a change in the blood pressure what happens? that will be detected by a carotid as well as the aortic baroreceptors. So there will be more stretch of the vessel wall and thus there will be increased discharge of these baroreceptors. And this information in turn will be transmitted via the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve to the medulla. And we said it reaches specifically the nucleus of tractor solitaris. Now what happens? See nucleus of tractor solitaris is like a sensor area. So once it receives these impulses, it will stimulate another area which is called the CVLM or the caudal ventral lateral medulla. Okay? And that is also called the vasodilator area. Right? So thus CVLM will be stimulated. And what will CVLM do? It will inhibit the other area that is RVLM, rostral ventrolateral medulla. That is a vasoconstrictor area. Okay? See basically we need when the BP is more, we need vasodilatation to occur. That is why the vasodilator area is stimulated, whereas the vasoconstricted area is inhibited. So that this RVLM usually produces a, a vas vasomotor tone to the vessels, okay, and which will increase the BP. So that is why our CVLM is inhibiting the RVLM, right? 
So this RVLM usually produces a vasomotor tone, which uh, which is uh, carried out via the intermediolateral area to the spinal cord, and from there the impulses move on to the adrenal medulla, which in turn produces catecholamines. It also acts on the heart as well as uh, blood vessels to increase this vasoconstrictor function. Okay, so basically there is a sympathetic outflow coming out. from this rvlm and that is inhibited by cvlm okay so i hope this concept is clear the impulses first reaches the nucleus of tractor solitarius it stimulates cvlm which will inhibit this tonically active rvlm and what is rvlm rvlm is an area which is a vasoconstrictor area which always discharges or gives off this sympathetic stimulation to these blood vessels as well as the heart so that will be inhibited by a vasodilator area okay so that vasodilatation can occur and bp can fall right so this is one part of the reflex next part is that it also stimulates the dorsal motor nucleus of vagus and we know vagus is in general an inhibitory uh, stimuli to the heart it decreases the heart rate and it brought brings about relaxation so that due to the effect of these two actions the whole bp will be reduced okay so this is how the baroreceptor reflex works it will stimulate the cvlm that is vasodilator area thereby inhibiting this rvlm not only that it will stimulate the vagal nucleus which will include the dorsal motor nucleus of vagus and nucleus ambiguus thereby causing uh, a decrease in function of the heart okay so we will see this as a flow chart now so whenever there is an increase in blood pressure there will be stretch of the carotid sinus so this in turn will lead to an increased discharge of the baroreceptors which via the cranial nerves 9 and 10 will reach the neurons of nucleus of tractor solitarius nucleus of tractor solitarius will uh, stimulate the cvlm by uh, producing the neurotransmitter glutamate and what will cvlm do it will release gaba and thereby inhibit the rostral ventrolateral medulla and thereby inhibit the sympathetic activity not only that nucleus of tractor solitarius will also activate the vagus nerve thereby decreasing the heart rate so these actions will bring about a decrease or an inhibition of a decrease in the blood pressure which was increased okay so i hope this concept is clear so this is the baroreceptor reflex So next we will see about the chemoreceptor reflex. So again, chemoreceptors have got the carotid as well as the aortic receptors, which in turn, via the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve, will send the inputs to the medullary centers. So here, what happens is when there is a fall in BP, okay. So when there is a fall in BP, obviously there is going to be a decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen and an increase in partial pressure of carbon dioxide. this will be detected by the respiratory centers and they will be stimulated in order to produce hyperventilation as well as tachycardia okay but not only the respiratory centers the cardiovascular medullary centers like the cardio cardiac accelerator center as well as the cardiac inhibitory center will be activated the vasomotor center will be activated and thus there will be an intense vasoconstriction so this is the primary effect of this chemoreceptor reflex because of that fall in bp the chemoreceptors is going to stimulate the vasomotor center and thereby cause vasoconstriction this in turn will produce an increased cardiac output and thereby brings the blood pressure to normal so in in one hand we'll think that by chemoreceptor reflex we'll have both tachycardia as well as an increase in bp but no there won't be a much tachycardia because the cardiac inhibitory center is also activated and cardiac inhibitory center always causes bradycardia so there won't be much of a tachycardia here so there will only be a slight increase in heart rate but there will be an increase in blood pressure so this is how the chemoreceptor reflex works okay so to re recap when the bp falls the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide will be different and this will stimulate the respiratory center which will cause hyperventilation tachycardia it will also stimulate the cardiac medullary centers which in turn will cause vasoconstriction increase cardiac output and blood pressure now for some additional scoring points you can also mention about cushing's reaction atrial stretch reflex as well as bain bainbridge reflex but uh, these are not that important when compared to the other three so the, whenever short term regulation is asked 
the must know points are baroreceptor reflex chemoreceptor reflex and cns ischemic response okay so to sum up when a short note on uh, short term regulation of bp is asked you have to first start with an introduction then write the what are the three mechanisms of regulation and then move on to the short term regulation which should include the baroreceptor reflex and then you can uh, draw a flow chart or a diagram of baroreceptor reflex then chemoreceptor reflex as well as cns ischemic response so i hope this concept is clear thank you